Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to be jumping in and just getting an introduction to our interdomain routing protocol, BGP. We're going to take a look at some of the attributes of BGP, just get our feet wet as far as what it is, where it would be used, that sort of thing. So we have a lot of cool stuff to cover. Let's go over and just start looking at some of its attributes. So the first thing about BGP, which we did sort of mention there during our introduction, is that this is an inner domain routing protocol. This means that its most common usage is between different autonomous systems, or ASs. We'll be talking more about those in just a moment. But this is generally used by service providers, possibly by multi-homed customers of those service providers, and it's also gaining very, very much in popularity for the network core of large enterprise networks. And this is simply because they actually run their network very much like a service provider would. One of BGP's biggest strengths is that it is very, very scalable. This can scale to hundreds of thousands, even millions of routes inside of, say, an MPLS core for a service provider. Now that scalability does come at the price of performance. BGP is certainly not the fastest routing protocol out there. Now, its performance can be tweaked a little bit. We can make it better. We'll talk more about BGP optimization in a future skill. But for right now, just understand that performance was not the primary goal when designing BGP. The primary goal was scalability, making that number one, with performance being number two. Also, since this is meant to run between different domains or different ASs, this is also a very non-trusting protocol. What we mean by that is if this is, say, a customer-service provider relationship, you know, the service provider doesn't trust the customer to do things right, the customer shouldn't trust the service provider to do things right, we should be checking everything that the other party is doing, and that requires tight route filtering. We want to make sure that we're only receiving and sending routes that we should be. And if everybody is double checking everybody else, then this works out for a very good ecosystem. Another attribute of PGP is that it is very policy based. What we mean by that is that it's designed to meet the needs of the AS, not necessarily follow the best path that we would think of traditionally from an IGP. The point we're really trying to make here is that BGP will not pick the path based on bandwidth or delay or hop count through routers like a traditional IGP would. Instead, we're going to be implementing a policy. Something else to note, that this does support multiple different protocols. There are many different ones, and we'll be talking about them through the SP Core course. However, just some of the basics, this will support IPv4, IPv6. It supports VPNv4 and VPNv6 for MPLS deployments. It supports VXLAN information. So this can support a bunch of different things. It is a very, very extensible routing protocol, meaning that it's easy to modify and add to. This is handled through different address families. Now I'm sure in your studies of routing protocols, You've heard the term distance vector many times in relation to things like RIP and DIGRP, which at its heart is a distance vector routing protocol. Well, BGP, we call it a path vector routing protocol. Now, as part of being a path vector routing protocol, this does use reliable updates, but those updates are only triggered. In other words, it doesn't periodically send updates like for example, RIP would. RIP, of course, by default, sends its entire routing table every 30 seconds. That would not work well as far as this whole scalability thing we were talking about earlier. That wouldn't really work out so well to send a million routes every 30 seconds. So we only send those updates when we need to, when something actually changes, hence the triggered. Also, as far as metrics, we already mentioned that it doesn't use the bandwidth of the link. Instead, it uses something called attributes. 
We're going to talk about this more in a future video, but BGP attributes are really what gives us a lot of control over how BGP behaves. Now, we mentioned this concept before about autonomous system numbers or AS numbers. These AS numbers can either be 16 or 32 bits. The 16-bit version are, of course, what we had originally, and then we started running out of public AS numbers, so the protocol was updated to now support 32-bit numbers. Now, of those numbers, they can either be public or private. Private AS numbers are generally used either inside of a public AS using something called confederations that we will be talking about in a later skill, or they can also be used between a customer and a service provider if that customer is only single-homed to that one provider. Now, there are ways to use a private AS number with two different service providers, but that's a little beyond what we're going to talk about here in the introduction. These private AS numbers, if you're doing 16-bit, they have the range of 64,512 to 65,534. And if you're using 32-bit numbers, then it has the values of 4.2 billion to, well, the top of the 32-bit number scale. And at the end of the day, since BGP is meant to be used between autonomous systems, this means that we're going to have two different neighbor types. The first is IBGP. IBGP is when the neighbors are in the same AS. This would be the case, for example, inside of this transit AS, or also possibly within that large enterprise network core. Both of these would probably be an example of where we would use IBGP. EBGP, of course, is when they're in different AS numbers. This would be used between different service providers or between a customer and a service provider. Those would be EBGP peers. These different neighbor types do operate differently. The neighbors get formed differently and how BGP acts to these different neighbors is different. This will be discussed in a future skill in much more detail. In this video, we just took a real quick look at BGP, got some preliminary necessary information out of the way so that we can jump in and start looking at BGP a little bit further in the next video. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.